Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, uh, what I have for you today is a story which I, um, I kind of like hinted at, you know, before, but today, we're gonna go diggity deep. In South uh, East Minnesota, uh, a lad was doing the old clackety clackety, you know yourself, and he was looking for two things. One was some tail, and two was to get rid of somebody. This is one of those, if you want to get something done, you really gotta, you really gotta do it yourself uh, type scenarios, because one, he tried to get somebody else to do it. Two, he tried to get themselves to do it. And three, well, he was like, well, fine. I guess I'll do it myself. Speaking of those scenarios, I make two true crime videos a week, every Tuesday and Friday. So please subscribe if you'd like to see them. And a couple of months back, I made two videos on the art of hiring fake hitmen. The stories were uh, pretty funny. People thought they were hiring Agent 47, and it was a womp womp a cop. And it was crazy how they were just like, yeah, throw my husband off 10 years into a, into a wood chipper or whatever, you know, go wild, be as creative as you want. But in one of the stories I looked at, there was a real life murder uh, attached to it. Sure, hey, let's give it a go. We got a scene to set before we got a tale to tell, and this tale takes us to uh, Cottage Grove, Minnesota. Where pride and prosperity meet is the motto, and it forms a suburb of Minneapolis. Wow, talk about your pride and prosperity. It's got a... It's got a... You got houses and logistics and plastics. Oh my. Cottage Grove lays some pipe. Get oiled up. People seem to be generally uh, enjoying it, though not this person who says it's boring and the tap water sucks. Whoa, calm down, let's not say things you can't take back. And speaking of things you can't, you know, take back, uh, have a listen to this. 911, what's the address of the emergency? I think my wife shot herself. There's blood all over. Does she still have the weapon? I don't know. We just got Where did she shoot here. herself? I don't know. I just saw her. Her in, in blood. I, I can't tell where she shot. I don't know. Are you going to remarry? <laughs> I don't know, bud. It is a 911 call that was made in November 2016. The weather that evening was calm, the air temperature crisp, and officers with the Cottage Grove Police Department were sent to South Street Cottage Grove. There was the house of the Allwines. You got your Stephen, your Amy, and their adopted son. They were a, a loving, by all accounts, happy, you know, deeply religious family. And now Amy was gone. It looked like by her own hand. When the police arrived, they found Stephen and his son in the garage. He directed the police to the back bedroom, and there Amy was found. She was lying on the floor, blood pooling around her and under her head. Beside lay a 9mm handgun. She was slightly warm to the touch, but her pulse had long since stopped uh, pulsating. She was gone. She had shot herself in the head. A shell casing was nearby, and the oven was still on. In 2016, Stephen was 43, Amy 44 years old. They had been married for many a year, over 20 by the end. Having met at a Christian college and fallen in the big L, they would later adopt a son. They took religion very seriously, being members of the United Church of God, which, uh, well, could really kind of be anything. Aren't most religions United Churches? Uh, they're running out of names. Stephen was an elder in the church, and he would give counseling to couples going through tough times though he had his own ahead. For some skadoosh, he worked as an IT consultant. Amy was a professional dog trainer. She had her own school, and she was loved dearly by her friends and her family. So this happening to her was shocking. So that evening, the 13th of November 2016, Stephen, he had been at home with Amy uh, pretty much all day, and then he their their son had been with the grandparents, so he had, he had gone over to... Uh, to, to collect their son. He said he last saw Amy at about 5.29 p.m. He was yapping away to her. She was saying she was feeling a bit lightheaded, a bit under the weather. He asked, but she was like, you know, 
I'm Grant. I'm Grant. Go off, collect our son, bring him back home. So he went off, he picked up the, the son, they, they had a bite to eat. They came back home at about 7 p.m. Um, the son went into the house first, and it was actually... He found, found Amy, he called for his dad, and, well... She had just gone, it appeared. He said the smoke was still in the air, and 911 was called. I think my wife shot herself. There's blood all over. What do you think happened to Amy? The firearm was in the crook of her left arm, which was unusual. Stephen would confirm she was right-handed, and the gunshot was to the right side of her head. That was something that was off from, uh, you know, at the scene from, from the start. There was a couple of things, actually. The oven was on, presumably, you know, Amy was, she, she had been roasting pumpkins in the oven, so presumably she had been, you know, doing the old cooking, and then what, she was just like, fuck this. The blood around her had drops, as if something had been suspended, dripping blood beside her. Later, when an autopsy was performed, the trajectory of the bullet was downward. Be very awkward to, like, do that to yourself. The medical examiner could not rule this as a suicide, and so it had to be treated from the very start as the other thing. And then the hallway in the, in the house, which looked brand new, shampoo, like it had just been cleaned. Um, well, the police got a luminol, our old friend luminol, and well, they found a lot uh, of stains. Stains up the wazoo. Someone had cleaned up, and now they had every sign this was a murder. Signed, sealed, delivered. But when the police, the Cottage Grove PD, you know, were called, this, the all wines were not unknown to the police. Six months earlier, uh, Amy Allwine had debt threats leveled against her. Someone had been using the dark web, the fucking dark web lads, and had put a bounty on Amy Allwine's head, dead or alive. Well, I mean, uh, mostly, mostly dead. But they had paid the kingly sum of 12 grand to have it done. Now it had been done. Back in May of 2016, the FBI had been alerted to a plot and then alerted the Cottage Grove PD that one of their citizens may be in danger. The base of Mafia. Remember uh, those boys? Well, here, you can go back and watch uh, Hiring Fake Hitmen Part 2, but a long story, not so long. Um, basically, the, the base of Mafia was a website on the dark web that you could access and you could pay in Bitcoin these Albanian assassinos to beat the living shite out of somebody or murder uh, someone. Whatever your fancy, really. It was believable, very much so, to actual likes ex special forces lads who would contact the base of mafia looking for work. Now, when I say it was believable, that's because it wasn't real. It was a scam. It was a scam because people would pay money in Bitcoin, which is largely uh, untraceable, and then nothing would happen. Y you know, you would ask, oh, kill this person. You know, here's all the information you know, and then they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we'll get, we'll get right on that. And I mean, you know, what are you gonna do, call the police? Yeah, I, I paid these online hitmen to murder somebody I know, and now they won't do it. That's a breach of contract. The base of Mafia site had been hacked at one point, and a lot of requested hits released. The site was fake. The requests from all over the world were very real, and so this information would be sent to uh, police departments and they'd be like, yeah, uh, somebody tried to pay to have you murdered, and they thought it was real. And someone had wanted uh, Amy Allwine dead, uh, a person who went by the pseudonym Dog Day God. In February 2016, Dog Day God had inquired to the base of Mafia how much for a hit. How much to make it look like a car accident? Six grand, and they asked how to pay. They were directed to Bitcoin websites. She, Dog Day God, used female pronouns, directed the Mafia toward Amy when she was in Illinois for a dog training competition in March 2016, saying they didn't give a shit about her traveling companion and they needed this bitch dead. The base of Mafia would later email uh, Dog Day God and say, yeah, they followed her in Illinois, but, you know, shit happens, they, they, they didn't have a chance. 
They'll get her next time. Next time, they'd use a sniper. During this whole time, uh, Dog Day God was emailing. She was telling the Basin Mafia of Amy's car type, her schedules, all that. Now again, the hit wouldn't happen. This time, the Mafia would say the assassin, you know, they almost got her, but they got pulled over and arrested for driving a stolen vehicle and possessing a gun. So, Amy and Steven were informed of this. Steven got a gun, the one Amy would later kill herself with, and installed security systems in their home. Then, in late uh, July, after Amy and Steven had been alerted, you know, about this plot, uh, Amy started getting emails from jane at gmail.com. Wow, how did I get that email address? The emails were pretty nasty, and they went like so. Amy, I still blame you for my life falling apart. I do not know how a fat bitch like you got to my husband, but because of you he left, and my life has become shit. I am sending you this email because it looks like you already know about me. I see that you have put up a security system now, and I have been informed by people on the internet that the police were snooping around my earlier emails. I have been assured that the emails are untraceable and they will not find me. <laughs> but I cannot attack you directly with them watching. Here is what is going to happen. Since I cannot get to you, I will come after everything else that you love. I know about your son, your husband, and your business. But thanks to the internet, I see you have a mother and father in Woodbury, a brother in St. Paul, and a sister in Yardley, PA. I have been busy researching topics on the internet, and have found that if you inject water into the brake line, then you will cause them to fail. What would happen if the brakes on the truck failed when your husband was hauling a heavy load? I found out how to blow up a gas meter and make it look like an accident. I know that the meter on your house and on your business are on the east side, and the meter on your parents' house is on the south side. I'm still watching you and your family. Here is how you can save your family. Commit suicide. If you do not, then you will slowly see things taken away from you. And each time you will know that you could have stopped it, which will eat you apart from the inside. By the time I am done, you will want to end it anyway. So why not do it now and save them? Based on a uh, uh, suicide website I'd rather not say, the best ways to do it are shotgun to the head, cyanide, Gunshot to the head, which is the same thing. Shotgun to the chest. Explosives. Hit by train. Jump from height. Hanging. Household toxins. Inhaling gas. Slitting wrist or throat. I know about this website because I've thought of this option many times. Remember, if you do not get it right the first time, then you will likely be committed for mental health issues and you will lose your business and possibly your family. So, I would pick a reliable method. I think it is an easy choice. One life to save six lives. Your family does not need you, but you can save them. Do not tell anyone about this email or the deal is off. And I will come after your family. Well, that really says it all. I think they covered all, uh, all their bases there. And you know, Amy would receive follow-up emails after that saying, you know, well, <laughs> giddy up like. By the way, Amy was not having an affair and she didn't steal anyone's husband. The idea that somebody would just out of the blue want to kill somebody out of our family is just it's obscene. So you have all of that, and then you have her actually ending up as a victim of a homicide. Dog days God, your days are dog gone. The investigation would continue for weeks into who killed. Amy Alwyn, who this, uh, this female, this, uh, dog day god person was, and from some of the interactions they gathered, uh, this person was a business competitor to Amy in the vicious, fucking vicious lads, dog training business, no mucking about. They did find one link. A few months back, dog day god, after contacting the base of mafia, had inquired about scopolamine on Dream Market Forum, a dark web, uh, marketplace. Now, scopolamine is used mainly uh, for to, you know to treat nausea, vomiting after surgery. Anesthesia can make you feel ill, so they'll give you this. And funnily enough, it was actually one of the first truth serums out there. But um, it, so it's often used to treat nausea, uh, motion sickness, that kind of uh, thing. But if you um, if you give enough of it to somebody, it will cause memory loss uh, and lock it, lack of consciousness. Essentially, it's, it's, it's quite similar to, to, to Rohypnol, to, to the, you know, the, the date, date rape uh, drug. 
So they wanted to see, they, you know, was any of it in her system? Maybe this uh, dog day god person was pretty serious. The police asked the medical examiner to test if Amy had it, and they found in Amy's system over 40 times what a doctor would prescribe of scopolamine, you know, in her system. And she hadn't been prescribed any by no doctor. So who was this dog day gone person? Who could they be? Well, uh, that would become clear when the medical examiner would rule Amy's time of death to be at about, about 3 p.m. One thing, my friends, is that nothing is ever really gone. Ever. You think it's uh, deleted, you know, from your phone, your computer, your whatever. Uh, it's probably not, or at least not completely. That's what Stephen Allwine thought when he handed over his phone to the police and was like, yeah, knock yourselves out. He handed over his phone uh, on the 13th of November, the day the investigation began and on his phone, the police found some messages from a woman named Michelle. Now, Michelle and Stephen had some spicy meatballs, and by meatballs, I mean messages and Stephen's meat and balls. She lived in the Western Metro Twin Cities area, and when the police spoke to her, she told them all about her and Stephen's relationship. A relationship that had begun on the site Ashley Madison, the website for cheating on your husband or wife. Stephen had in fact learned of this website from his marriage counseling in the church days. Couples would come in and I guess they would say, yeah, he's cheating on me using, using Ashley Madison. And Stephen was sitting there. He was thinking to himself, wow, it just ruined their marriage. Maybe I'll try it. Stephen would date Michelle and a couple of other women on it. Now remember how Dog Day God had paid in Bitcoin to have Amy Allwine killed? All done on Tor, the browser, and VPNs, and, and all of that. They weren't able to like trace any kind of IP addresses uh, from it. But one thing was that Stephen, he was questioned. And he said he'd never, never in my life, lads, been on the dark web. But his phone did have a Bitcoin wallet. The same day Dog Day God asked the Basin Mafia how to pay them for the murder, cookies were installed on Stephen's phone from Coindesk and a few other Bitcoin websites. A Bitcoin address Dog Day God had sent to the Basin Mafia in an email, that same address was also found on Stephen's phone on a deleted file. Every transaction has a unique address. The only way Stephen could have that address was if he was dog day god. In that big old email that was sent to Amy from jane at email.com, all that information had been searched for on Stephen's computer. I can see that it looked like blood in the wood floor just outside the bedroom that had been cleaned. Do you have any information about that? No. Were there any injuries by anyone in the house that had been cleaning? When you checked on Amy, do you recall getting blood on you in any way? Stephen was due to be working on the 13th uh, of November from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. The 13th of November, that was a Monday. He did the, he worked Sundays to, to Wednesdays. So he did log in at like 6 a.m. that day, uh, the last day, but he did zero work at all. In his IT, uh, you know, work, he would, uh, you know, he'd work on projects and he would constantly be providing case updates, notes and stuff like that. There was none that, that day. Finally, gunshot residue was found on Stephen's right hand. It was in January 2017 that Stephen Allwine was arrested and charged with Amy's murder. Stephen pleaded not guilty. He was pretty convinced and still remains to this day convinced that a uh, dog day god is a real person, not him, but a real person who had it out for Amy. But the prosecution said the story went like this. Stephen wanted a divorce, but his church would poo-poo that idea. He wanted to be out there dogging chicks, and so Amy had to go. If he couldn't divorce, then he wanted a more permanent solution. At first, he tried to hire what he thought was a real hitman. Then, when that didn't work, as it was a scam, 
he tried to get her to kill herself. And then he decided to do it the old-fashioned way. When his son was at the grandparents' house, he drugged Amy and shot her dead. Then he made it look like a suicide, cleaned up the scene, went, picked up his son, and had his son find her. Are we gonna remarry? <laughs> I don't know, bud. He was also hoping to pick up that, uh, you know, 700 big ones. Very nice. Stephen Allwine was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Five years later, in the chapel of Stillwater Prison, Stephen Allwine is sitting down for his first interview. He claims he was framed. Did you kill Amy? No. Who did? Um, I believe, based on the evidence that I've seen now, I believe I know who did. Um, and I trace it back to somebody that she was working with. How did that very specific Bitcoin wallet end up on your Apple products? Right, so again, it never showed up on my phone. So just to clarify that, but to, you know, my supposition, and again, I, I don't have evidence to back this up, is that somebody else got it posted to the cloud, and then the cloud synced with my MacBook and brought it there. What you seem to be saying is that there was an elaborate hack involved of your systems to make you look guilty. Yes. Um, and yet there's but, never been any evidence of that, correct? Well, yes and no. I mean, one of the things I always tell people is, you know, change your passwords, update your passwords, have different passwords. And unfortunately, I didn't follow my own advice. I couldn't have done it. If you know me as an individual, I couldn't have done it. Once again, we have a story of, um, just get a divorce. Come on, just divorce. There's no need to be killing. No need. Come on, man. But the religion wouldn't let them. So, so let me get this straight. Stephen wouldn't uh, get a divorce because the religion frowned upon it. He thought it might make him look bad. So he killed her instead. After all, divorce is a no-no. But if he's a widower and his wife killed herself, well, isn't he just the swell poor old guy, you know? Poor creature like you. So once again, it's about somebody hiding behind religion while not giving a shit about being a good person at all if they think murdering somebody is not as bad as divorcing somebody. We believe that, that marriage is a covenant not just between the man and the woman, but with God as well. And so, unless you know you break that covenant, then we don't... We don't. Most religions say, you know, try and be decent, uh, but they don't even give a shit about that then either. They would rather end somebody else's life than be frowned upon. Just stop doing it. Just stop. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here with Misha, watching this whole video. Uh, right here, um, to end, please subscribe uh, if you'd like to. That, that helps out a lot to see to true crime videos a week every Tuesday and Friday. Um, you can check out merch down below in the description. There's some t-shirts and mugs and hoodies and all that kind of stuff. Or you can check out Patreon, where it's two bucks a month. You get, uh, you know, uh, bonus videos, early access to videos, Discord, and there's actually a discount for the shop too. So yeah, that about wraps it all up. Uh, go on. Here, listen, I'll see you as always real soon in the next one. But until then, please take care of yourselves. Because I love you. Mike out.